considered that number, but yeah, for sure. And, and, you know, that question really addresses the point that some foods have a lot of phosphate in them as yep. preservative. Yep. And so when you feed the tank, your phosphate level is going to bounce up. I didn't know phosphate was actually preservative. I thought it was just a byproduct that was in the food, but no, it's a, it's a, it's well, it's everywhere. Yep. Um, but it's a, it's, it's used as a preservative in foods and, and, uh, some foods have more of it than others. Generally mm -hmm. the, the, I don't want to say higher level, but the, 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 the better foods tend mm -hmm. to use a little less phosphate as preservative. Yep. Um, but it's often used in, in lots of foods and, I won't, I don't, I don't want to talk about brands or anything, but, um, one place that you sometimes see it really drastically dramatic numbers mm -hmm. is in some frozen foods. Yeah. Do you, okay. That's actually a good one. Do you prefer like pelletized food or frozen food? Personally, I prefer pellets. Okay. And the reason I do is because the fish that we keep in our tanks, and this is true for the corals too, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about fish food when you're yeah. talking about pellets. The fish that we keep in our tank, we feed them at best two times a day or three times a day. Mm -hmm. On a coral reef, they're eating all day long. That's all yeah. they do. They mm -hmm. look for food all day and they eat all day long. Yep. And so if we're only going to feed them two or three times a day, we need to pack as much nutrition as we can into each bite that they get. Mm -hmm. It's got to be high quality, high protein food yep. um, that gives them everything they need because they're only going to eat a couple of times. Yep. And Makes so, sense. you know, think about if you went to one meal a day, mm -hmm. you'd have to make that meal really healthy. And, and that's what we do to our fish in our, in our tanks. So mm -hmm. I like pellets because if you can get the fish over to pellets, you're going to be able to pack more nutrition into each bite that they get. Mm -hmm. And they need that because they're not eating and pecking at stuff all day long like they are on a reef. Or better yet, auto feeder and feed them multiple times, more times per day. Um, multiple smaller feedings, yep. absolutely the best way to go. It's mm -hmm. also better for your corals, by the way. Um, your corals are filter feeders. They're feeding all day long. What do we do? We come in in the morning and, and target feed them and then broadcast at night or vice versa. Yep. Um, twice a day, maybe. Um, again, okay. they're filter feeding all day long on the reef. So high nutrition value per unit of volume is always what you're looking for in your foods. And mm -hmm. if you look at frozen foods, I'm not against frozen foods. Sometimes the fish really love them. But it if is. you look at the nutritional content in, fo in frozen foods, they're mm -hmm. generally nowhere near the volume, per volume uh, nutritional content of uh, a good pellet food. Okay. All right, you're swaying me. I feed mainly frozen, but I'm going to start going a little more on the pellet side. Mix it up a little bit, you know? <laughs> That's don't do now, don't but... leave the frozen food yeah. altogether. But if you can get those guys eating some pellets, they're going to get better nutrition. Um, look at the nutritional breakdown on mm -hmm. your frozen food, and then look at the nutritional breakdown on a good quality pellet. Yep. Now, here's one thing about frozen foods. When you look at the nutritional breakdown, make sure that it is the wet analysis, not the dry analysis. Mm -hmm. Many of the frozen foods list extremely high protein content, because they're talking about the dry weight. Yeah. You have to make sure that it's the wet weight on the package that okay. they're talking about. Hmm. Good to know. And again, just so I, I don't want to offend all the frozen food companies out there. I'm not against frozen foods yeah. at all. I just like to be able to also supplement with a higher nutritional value per unit of volume pellet. It's okay. I, you've just sold me on setting the auto feeder back up to give them pellets in the afternoon. Make it sell. <laughs> awesome. <at night>. Awesome. <laughs> yep. Um, I love convincing you of stuff. <laughs> perfect. That's good though. I like it. Um, I don't know if you want to answer this one, but in the chat, they're asking, what's a good high quality pellet? What do you recommend? I don't know if you want to throw brands out, but. I will throw a brand out. Um, and I'm full transparency in addition to being the CEO of Tropic Marin USA, uh, uh, Leslie and I are also the U.S. office for this German company. 
Um, mm -hmm. The reason we took this German company on to sell their products is because, number one, they're the premier fish medication, ornamental fish medication company in the world. Mm -hmm. And number two, they uh, they uh, manufacture and sell um, Dr. Basilier's bio fish food. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, Devin, I did not want to sell fish food. Yeah. Um, I've known these guys that run this company for a very long time because they distribute their products with Tropic Marin in Europe together. Mm -hmm. And I've known them for years. And they came to us, to Leslie and I, and they, they wanted us to bring their, their products into the country, particularly their fish food. And I said, I, I really don't want to because there's a lot of good fish foods out there. Yeah. A lot of good, high quality fish foods at a really good price. Not interested in doing it. Um, and they said, no problem. We're going to send you a bunch of samples, use them in your tank and um, see what you think. Yeah. So I used them in, at that point I had the cichlid tank, 150 mm -hmm. African tank. When I saw what those fish looked like a month or two later, I was convinced and I called them up and I said, let's do it. Um, very high in protein. Mm -hmm. And all of the raw protein comes from wild caught Scandinavian whitefish. So it's all very clean, pristine protein. Uh, Dr. Basilier is one of the top fish biologists in the, in the, in the, in the world, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, these are his formulas. Each type of food does a little different thing. I was going to say they um, have a lot. There's a lot of different types of food. Yeah, he's a big one. On, he does what he calls nutricaments. Mm -hmm. And these are natural additives that all accomplish something different. Um, and so it's good to kind of mix up the foods that you're using. I'm a huge fan of the acai mm -hmm. because it brings out the colors in the fish. Um, I also love the pumpkin and the lapacho. Um, and then the, he's tasty. got a, a whole program for um, ick, for for stopping the ick cycle with a food called matrine. Um, so there's, there's a lot of different foods. They all do something a little different. Yep. They're not expensive. They, they fall kind of in the mid range of, of what foods cost and they are super high quality. And I'm not afraid to vouch for them because, mm. um, if I had the pictures on my computer, I could show you what my fish looked like. They look like <laughs> completely different fish yeah. two months down the road. So, question, if I want to try them, where does one find them? Are, are um, you distributed them? Like, are they anywhere to actually get them in U.S.? Oh, Canada? yeah, there's a lot of sources online. Uh, okay. Bulk Reef Supply has some. Uh, Ken's Fish has some. KJ Aquatics has some. Uh, Super Cichlids has them. Okay, perfect. There's a number of different sources online for them. Okay, I'm going to try some. I'm going to order some and try it. And they're different sizes. Yeah. You want to use a slightly smaller pellet than what you would normally think you should use because the the food, the pellets are very dense. They're very hard. Mm -hmm. And um, you want to use one that's smaller so that it goes down the digestive tract easily of the fish. Okay. Um, if you cut open a, a good-sized fish that dies, you'll see that their tri digestive tract is really much smaller than than you think it would be. Mm -hmm. um, so use a slightly smaller pellet, one size down from whatever you're using now. Um, and um, I, you take a picture of your fish and then a month down the road, take another picture and compare them. Uh, yeah. The owner of the company keeps, um, uh, talk about fresh water for a minute, but the owner, one of the owners of the company keeps Altum Angels. And he yeah. showed me pictures before and after of his Altum Angels. Um, mm -hmm. And I couldn't believe the difference. Huh. So it's really, cool. you know, I don't have, um, I don't have pictures on my computer, uh, but I, I will see if this will work. I don't know if this is going to work. You said the acai was one of your favorites. Okay. Throw one uh, acai. Yeah. Acai. So Absolutely. let's see if you, let's see if you'll be able to see this. I don't know. Do Does it. that show up? Or it gets whited out. Yeah. Those it's a little are the awesome angels. And that's the before picture. Okay. And this fish right in the front mm -hmm. is the dominant male. And w one month after feeding acai, that fish looked like 
this. This is the same fish, believe it or not. Oh yeah, that's like, there was yeah, there was like no redder color on it before. Well, huh. and look at the black lines. That's yeah. the key. You know, if you feed a high beta carotene food, you can get that red color. Uh, if you if you have a tank full of yellow tangs and you feed them a high beta carotene food, they mm -hmm. start to turn kind of orange um, because the the beta carotene kind of dyes them. Yeah. So you can do that red part with beta carotene, but you're not going to get those black lines to be vivid like that. The acai is what does that. There's actually a wonderful story um, that Dr. Basilier told me that he was collecting fish in the Amazon basin and he went to this one place and he caught some fish and they looked really vividly much brighter than the mm -hmm. fish that he was catching any place else of the same species. Mm -hmm. So he said to the guide that was taking him around, um, why, you know, we got to get the collectors to come here because the fish are so much prettier here. The guide said, no, you don't, you don't need to get the, the collectors here. You just need to feed them the berries. And he huh. showed them that all around that area were acai palms that dropped the berries in the water and the fish eat the berries. And that's why the colors came out. Huh. The cool thing about the acai berry is